See, that's what I look more like these guys back here. This I should be playing a horror movie criminal. That's that's the look I got. I know who I am. He's a horror movie criminal. I remember my agent sent me to an audition one time, and it's a bunch of guys that look like Brad Pitt. They got like the flowing hair. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? This ain't. (laughs) Yeah. What are you sending me to this for? Right, right. (laughs) I know who I am. I'm not afraid. Not scared. I'm not ashamed. That's where I belong. I need to get in these horror flicks. Be the bad guy. That'd be great. Yeah, would you be it. okay with that being masked though, or would you want to be sh- seen? Oh, I, I'd, I'd be masked. I'd, if you, if you, yeah, being the parts, the part. You know, I can do that. Okay. And there's no dialogue or anything to it, obviously, but sh- uh, it'd be a great experience, I think. Okay. All right. Well, we're rolling. Um, this is episode nine already, moving pretty quick. Today we bring in Dan Wells. You may have seen him in Straight Out of Compton and American Crime Story. How you doing, Dan? Good. How you doing today, Mike? Good, man. Appreciate you coming out here from Bakersfield. No problem. Great day. So this is going to be like a hybrid episode because you were in Straight Outta Compton, and I'm a huge F. Gary Gray fan, and I, I wanted to hear about your experience, that whole experience um, from the audition, from actually from you hearing about it, to just everything down the line, because uh, I'm kind of fascinated with that and how that works. Uh, straight out of Compton, uh, to this point, has been the highlight of my career, and that whole experience was, you know, kind of surreal going through. When I first found out they were making that movie, I started just you get on Facebook, you get on everywhere, ask, hey, I need to audition for this movie. And when I found out I finally had an audition for that movie, I'm on Facebook again asking people, please, does anybody know anybody? Help me. <laughs> what did you want to do in it? I mean, you didn't care. I didn't care. I would have been a part of that movie no matter what. Okay. I knew uh, based on what the movie was about, who I am. I knew I was, if I'm going to be a mom, be a cop in this film. Right. And I knew that's where I was going. I knew that's what I was headed to. But my main concern was getting in. I'd have taken anything they gave me. Okay. So you get called in, or actually you go to the audition, mm-hmm. and, and, and is there a long line of, of cats there? No, I, um, SAG audition, standard. It was pretty quick, in and out. Um, as I was walking down the hallway leaving, they called me back in to do another part, which made me extremely happy because now i feel like okay they like what they saw they call me back to do another one as you're leaving as i'm leaving i left the door i'm out lady comes following me down the hall asked me if i'll come back and read for another part i was ecstatic okay but then they call me back in to read for the detroit police officer who was giving them the warning regarding seeing, uh, singing at, at the, the police at the concert i right? called I, I came back and i read for that part again. okay wow okay so then uh, at that point were you hoping, or were you like, ah, I'm probably not going to get this, or what were you thinking? It, like everything. I've been to auditions where <clears throat> I felt extremely positive, and that one I did feel extremely positive about, okay. but I've felt positive before and right. never heard from anybody again. So you you go out with high hopes, and you hope for the best. So when they call you, they tell you, okay, you got X part, and you don't know exactly, or do you know exactly once they call you what you got? When they call the day they call me, they tell me you got the part, and yeah. I, I know I'm in the movie. I know I'm going to play in one of these cop roles. Um, I, I didn't know exactly because they had had me read for two parts. I didn't know which one I was going to be, but I, I didn't care. Right, give me one of them and I'll be there. From there, the process starts. You know, you get called in for costume. You get called in to do different things leading up to the movie, up up to shoot day, and mm-hmm. after that, it's just a pretty normal process up until the day you hit the set and you're okay. ready to shoot. Okay, and then you were saying earlier that. You thought you were going to play one role, and then F. Gary Gray was like, "No, nah, I'm going to switch you over." He did switch me at the last second. I was I was slated to play the cop in my scene that um, has a confrontation with Ice Cube's parents. Okay, that's where I was slated. That gentleman that played that role was slated to play the part I played. Mm-hmm. F. Gary Gray had different plans, and he switched us up right at the end as we got on set. Did you have a problem with that? As far as well, damn, do I no. look a certain way that they want me to do this? I'm not going to question F. Gary Gray's process. Okay. F. That's Gary awesome. Gray no. had a process. He's right. doing what he's doing. It's it's awkward mm-hmm. because I have lines that I've learned and now I've got to okay. adapt to something else. But I mean, he knew that as well as I did, so he was okay. good. With it. Well, I guess not so much a problem with F. Gary Gray. I think did you kind of think to yourself, well, do they want me to play this because they think I look? Like I, I knew was, he wanted me to play that part because I'm bigger, meaner, okay. scarier looking than right. the other guy. And he wanted me to be the one slamming somebody down on the hood of the car. And, yeah. hey, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. And where'd you shoot that at? We shot that in right next to USC in okay. the neighborhoods right around there. And how was that night? Uh, it was long night, a lot of cuts to make room for the 
police helicopter flying up above. Um, it was it was a great night though. Working with F. Gary Gray was a great. Night. We probably shot for twelve hours to get that one yeah. quick scene. When I first saw the movie, right from that opening scene, um, or Easy E at the at the crack house there. I, this movie was different to me. It was it was more than a biopic. I just thought, and plus I'm a huge F. Gary Gray fan, and, and I felt that it was more of a like a saga. It was just like an epic uh, movie. And uh, as I was watching it, I saw you in there. I'm like, okay, this is this is gonna work. Now I got another tie to it, you know. So this this is great, man. I I always guess that they're gonna do ADR on a lot of stuff. I just don't know where and when. I just figure, well, how are you gonna get past the cameraman's footsteps or? you know, cars passing by. And that one, that night was pretty chaotic, right? With the chopper up above. Yeah. When, anytime you're shooting on location in the middle of a city, mm-hmm. you're not going to, you're not going to avoid noise. You're going to have noise and you're going to have to ADR it later. Okay. Did you tell them during your audition that you were in law enforcement? They knew I was an actual police officer. Yeah. When I got, when I go to the audition, I talk about that all the time. F Gary Gray himself. No, he wasn't there okay. <laughs> for the actual audition, but yeah, they knew I, I make that, Mm-hmm. available i'll let them know that that i am actually in law enforcement and, and any problems at, at your job because of this oh yeah i ended up problems i didn't think i'd have i mean i'd been acting for several years my the, the department i was working for at the time had never had a problem with it until i was in mm-hmm. straight out of compton right and then i ended up in eight months of internal affairs explaining myself for being in this movie i still to this day don't understand the actual yeah. problem they had with it other than they didn't like it and it I mean, I wouldn't say cost me my job, but I left the department because of it. Probably because of Straight Outta Compton? Um, there was other stuff leading up to it. It was kind of a long time coming. That was the final straw. Yeah. Yeah, that said, uh, they're too much in my personal life and what I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I had to get out. Yeah, because I wouldn't think that's a conflict of interest. I mean, it's a totally different job. I mean, yeah, you're portraying your real job, but it's still a different line of work. I mean, that's... It, it's a movie. It's, right. It, it's acting. And th- their trouble with it was they were afraid that I was going to reflect poorly on the department and they were, people were going to see me and think I'm really like that in real life. And, you know, my response to them was, you know, it's acting. Right. The, every time some actor plays a murderer, the cops don't show up at his house the next day to check on him to make sure he didn't really murder anybody. Yes. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a process. It's acting. And I can't blame it on everybody. Most people got it. And most people were great with it. There was a couple of higher ups at my department that... And had a ridiculous issue with it and hey that's them and yeah exactly. i moved on from it okay now being that you are in law enforcement and you work in hollywood um watching some of these um cop stories police stories um you see a lot of realism in there or do they get it wrong no they there's very miss? real there's Content. very little realism in hollywood but if you if you want to talk about the reality of being a police officer all the time, even cops is, you know, it's supposed to be reality TV, but they're taking minimal portions of what happens mm-hmm. in, in police work. Cop police work for the most work is for the most points, a lot, very boring. Mm-hmm. A lot of the times boring. Yeah. You couldn't make a reality. You couldn't make something that looks real off of what <laughs> cops do on a day to day basis. It's not, it's Become not exciting boring. enough. Right. Who's going to watch that for two hours? What do you think is the closest movie to being realistic? To you, uh, I know everybody was really into End of Watch, and End of Watch to me overall was not. But I love to watch the interaction between the two actors. To watch mm-hmm. Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Pena in the vehicle, yeah, when they're interacting as officers in a vehicle, that was spot on. Right, they killed it, and any cop that watched that enjoyed watching it just for that realism. But the rest of the movie, of course. They got to overblow it for Hollywood, which we understand. It has to be, yeah. We, we want to watch something exciting. Yeah, exactly. Like when you you make a movie out of a, a book, you know, you're going to leave out a lot of uh, stuff because you can only condense it. Oh, yeah. You know, you want to bore people. You know, you got to at least have some movement. Visually, we got to be stimulated for two hours or right. you're going to lose your audience. Okay. Um, the scene where the officer, I think it's Michael Pena, fights my man inside the apartment. What do you think about something like that? <laughs> No, I, I couldn't see that happening, not without somebody getting seriously fired. But uh, yeah, every cop's wanted mm-hmm. wanted to, to do that at some point or another. Right. But no, I, I've i never seen that happen anywhere in my 20 years. And yeah. I don't think I ever would. Now, 30 years ago, prior to me, I could see cops doing that. There was, it was a different time period. But no, that's okay. that's not the kind of thing that I think I, I can't say it never happens. But right, it's not the kind of thing. Okay, that's... consulting on movies is very important. Like with Heat, um, 
that I've been told, you know, it's one of my favorite movies, but I've been told that that's pretty realistic. And I think that has a lot to do with the consulting. As far as the movements of the actors and stuff, Heat's a movie that cops love to look to because the way people shoot their guns, the way things are done in that movie, it's just, it's technical. A lot of it's technically accurate and it looks really right. good. Um, what about like the blood splatter and the blood everywhere in, in, in movies in general? You know, what do you uh, think? A lot of crime. I've been on crime scenes that were pretty bad and I've been on ones that weren't. Um, it's more of the, when you're talking about police work and what's reality on TV, it's more of the, the overall amount of excitement. People, yeah. You know, Police work is very exciting on TV. Police work in real life is a lot of downtime, a yeah. lot of boring time. That's where it gets to be a big discrepancy. And then you worked on American Crime Story. That was about Versace, correct? Yeah, the assassination of Gianni Versace. And and, and what was that like? That was it was a great experience. It was a wonderful experience working. Uh, you know, got to fly back to Chicago for a couple of days and shoot. Um, they were pretty accurate on there, but of course they had a story to go by yeah so they're they're telling a story um i can't think of his name the young guy that played andrew kunan and did yeah. an amazing job um got to work with judith light which if oh, you're yeah. a kid growing up in the oh, 80s yeah. you watch who's the boss yep. loved her I got a picture with her love love one of the sweetest people i've ever met um it, it was an amazing experience working on that and to see something you've done even though you're only a small part of it to see something you've done blow up and do so well mm-hmm. th- that you were even a small part of is Makes you, makes you proud. You were saying earlier um, that the horror movies before when you watch now, and I know you said there's a little age in there, but they said they're not the same type of fear or that the same type of a suspense you got. What do you think is, the, I guess, the catalyst for that? What is the- I, have to say, I think it's just more age and growing up. I, I miss that being a kid and feeling extremely terrified by watching a movie. I liked horror movies when I was a kid. I liked being afraid. I liked yeah. watching. And I miss having that that feeling of, fear that you had when you were a kid for me it's real hard to watch horror movies now and not just say oh it's fake right <laughs> i i hate that i hate the idea of it but it's just the way it is and there are still horror movies i watch that i really enjoy i i, I love anything by rob zombie i've watched you know house of a thousand corpses everything i've seen by rob zombie i just like the way he does things the dynamics everything it does i there's still horror movies i enjoy i just miss that Mm-hmm. unknown fear you had when you were a kid because you really thought something was going to jump out. You know, I miss walking down the hall after watching a movie and yeah. going, what's behind that door? Right. I miss that that feeling. It's a desensitization, I think. Yeah, Just, yeah. you know, especially, yeah, you know, your line of work, you know. You probably good. see all kinds of real-life horror stories. and uh, Making horror movies, I think you can still, you get some of that because maybe you're not feeling it, but you're scaring people. Right. You know, you're bringing right. that to somebody else. And I think it's, any any horror movie director or producer that can bring that together and still get that dynamic out of people is yeah. doing great. And it's all the setting, too. I've talked about this before on, I think, a couple other episodes. It's all the setting you're in. Like, if you watch a movie by yourself when it's quiet, a scary movie, with good sound, mm-hmm. there's far more potential of you being a little frightened, a little scared. But if you're watching it, you know, if we put a scary movie on right here with these lights on, you know, and us three talking. watching it together. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just not the same. You know, I mean, as a kid, I remember I was scared of uh, The Exorcist. Um, seeing her, you know, just visions of her laying in that bed, and I'd go to my room, and there's my bed, you know, and I, I really wouldn't want to look towards it too much. But now, you know, now it's more of a, it's more of a game. I think it's more fun. You know, scary movies, scary movies to me are more fun now. You know, unless you know, every now and then you'll get a few. Um, few good ones that come along like i think don't breathe and evil dead those are more modern ones those i think were a little more frightening to me and remakes too i mean they're messing up a lot of remakes now right i'm Reboot. not a fan of the remakes i don't think i've seen a remake yet that i thought was as good as the original film yeah and i, I wish they just quit doing it there's nothing wrong with original ideas <laughs> yeah. come up with something original yeah, like Poltergeist reboot i didn't care for um the nightmare on elm street reboot i didn't care for now, the Friday the 13th, that came out in 09. I actually thought it was pretty good for a reboot. I, I missed that one. I did watch the new Halloween. What would you think? And I thought it was a good film. Like I said, it probably would have scared me more when I was a kid. Yeah. But I thought it was a decent film. And I liked the way they, they took it back to Mike Myers as an actual person. Right. Ho- mm-hmm. Homicidal maniac as opposed to... All the shit they had. Yeah, <laughs> whatever they did back then. Yeah. 
I thought, I thought Jamie Lee Curtis came back and did a good job yeah. for what she was brought back to do. I thought she did a good job. She was job. ferocious, man. I mean, when I was a kid, I watched a lot of the movies that everybody would know about. I was in. I liked the Friday the 13th movies. Yeah. I watched the Halloween movies, um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Everybody loved Freddy yeah. Krueger when we were little. But I think my favorite stuff was a lot of the, just the off-shot stuff, the horror movies that you didn't hear a whole lot about, that you'd be laying, in, laying at yeah. home one night and this, crap comes on tv right. and you're like, i'm gonna check this out and a lot of it i couldn't even name for you right now but right. that was the kind of stuff i enjoyed watching when i was a kid you still watch the walking dead then huh i do watch the walking dead i'm still a fan um i'm hanging in there how's I, that going i i think they did a lot this year to bring it back to where it needed to be but it's i think they'd be good to end it to to, to pick a point and end it so i watched the first three seasons of it and then i just stopped um, a lot of those characters are gone now, I guess. The, his wife, yeah. Rick's wife. Um, is his son still going? No. Nope. He's gone too. So they, He's gone. Rick's gone. See? I, yeah. Okay, and how's it going without him? It's it's a different story. Mm-hmm. It, that vibe's gone. When okay. you get rid of the main character that's been the main character on a TV show for so many long for so long, yeah. you know, they've tried to do it, Two and a Half Men. Uh, yeah. Shows have tried to do it before, no matter what kind of show they are. When you get rid of the main character, you've changed the story. How long has he been gone? Uh, just this past season. Oh, was, okay. Yeah, he, okay. So now they're just continuing on with just with a new him. group. and Yeah. They, they left it open for him to return. It's not like he died. Mm-hmm. But it's just... It's not the same story without him. What about the ma- the other guy, the Daryl? Daryl. Daryl's hanging strong. I think the only reason Daryl's hanging strong is because they they'd lose their fan base if they lost yeah. Daryl. They know there's a lot of people barely hanging on right now, and if Daryl Dixon was gone, it'd be the end of that show. Okay, and then now there's spinoffs too, right? In different cities. Yeah, I've tried watching a couple of. I tried watching one, the first one they did, The Fear of the Walking Dead. And yeah, I just couldn't get into it like the original. So if you were able to play, let's say you're. Um, like a scary type villain, what? How do you? What demeanor do you want to set for that? See, if I was to get back to what I wanted to do, the things I like, the Rob Zombie films, the Captain Spaulding characters, mm-hmm. and stuff like that, those are the people that I that I look at. And I go, that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be fun to play. It'd be fun to look at. You know, as a Michael Myers fan, a Halloween fan, um, a lot of people didn't like what he did with those. And, mm-hmm. But I, I like the first one, second one, and but the first one. Um, He's just kind of all over the place, erratic, what's going on, and I didn't have a problem with that. I haven't seen House of a Thousand Corpses yet. The Devil's Rejects. Devil's that's, Rejects. That's yeah. a freaking movie. I love that kind of movie. The style, just crazy, but it's not, you know, at least it's, it's going back to the Halloween and the Friday the 13th, it's yeah. not some supernatural. It's just crazy people, mm-hmm. and that's the kind of stuff you could look at and go, okay, if anything was to really happen, these crazy people. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you can watch his movies. You can watch how these people are acting, not when they're killing people, yeah. just how they're acting. You can walk down Hollywood Boulevard and see people acting like that right. any time of day, and you're going, oh, you know, who is this guy? When did you start wanting to get into acting anyway? Was it an early thing with you? Uh, it was. Um, I did some theater in high school and stuff like that and always really enjoyed it. Then when I went off to college and stuff like that, I just forgot about it. I come mm-hmm. from a small town about two hours north of Holly, or New York, north of Los Angeles. Yeah. And... <clears throat> I think if you don't grow up in it, it just seems so far away. And then when I was a, it was about 10, 12 years ago, I just decided, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm going to try it myself. And I figured it out myself and got into it. I'm, I think I'm doing all right for where I came yeah, from. Yeah, for sure. Are you content with uh, the roles you've been getting or would you like to be more more into more dramatic you know uh, being a real police officer i get typecast a lot sure and i don't mind that at all you know yeah. I, i'll play a cop all day long but i'd like to branch out a little bit and yeah do a little more like a horror movie yeah, i'd love to do a horror movie okay. i'd love to do more of a horror movie and not just where i'm the you know the cop in the horror movie <laughs> yeah but you... actually do something a little more creative like the victim or would you want to be like e- either killer? way but i lo- i I love the villain. I yeah. love the bad guy. I love, especially in a horror movie, mm-hmm. the, the guy, hey, who who doesn't want to be the killer right. in a fantasy situation? Yep. For me, I mean, I get teased about a lot to say that um, acting as a police officer is kind of a stretch, I guess. I mean, I'm stepping into a role I've been doing for years. To prep for being that type of person, 
it's there's a lot out there to see. There's a lot of documentaries and a lot of stuff for, mm-hmm. and you can get in the mind of a serial killer on just about any documentary. Yeah, any you can find them all over the place. But I, I mean, creating that character in your own mind is how you got to get into it. And yeah, you just gotta you gotta want it. You gotta go do it. Okay, so that was a thousand ways to die. And tell tell me about that shoot. How that went? A thousand ways to die was a great. Like I said, it was a great shoot. It's reenactment show for the most part so there's no script you're just kind of going along the director's giving you some directions you guys are making it up as you go along yeah but uh, but it's just a fun it's a fun way to spend a day shooting a tv show and i got a lot of good exposure out of that that was actually one when i first did that show i had never heard of it and at that point not too many people knew what i did knew what i was going to hollywood for yeah and i was sitting with a buddy of mine at lunch and he asked me if i'd done anything recently he knew and i said i did a thousand ways to die and he's oh i love that show my boys and i watch it all the time yeah and that's when i first had to start telling people okay i've been acting in hollywood because okay people are going to actually see this right and see me on tv (laughs) and i did i got some exposure out of that one so what was that what was that episode Um, uh it was called uh, mr ouch or nurse case scenario, something along that. They changed it. <laughs> but um, What was the premise and what happened? It was, I played a drug user who breaks into a hospital in the middle of the night and confronts the acting on-duty nurse. Okay. Who happens to be a very attractive female and you know uses her sexuality to lure me into a certain situation. Okay. And killed by getting sucked into an MRI machine because of a metal plate in my head. <laughs> I, I can't vouch for the accurateness of it, but yeah. it's supposed to be real. Okay. Uh, it was a great shoot. Wow, I want to check that. Was that a full day? Oh, that was a full day shooting. We, I mean, we shot, those aren't full episodes. Like they're not 30 minutes long. Mm-hmm. In every 30 minute episode of A Thousand Way to Die, there's three different scenarios. So you're a, you know, eight, yeah. eight minute set or something. That's they're supposed to be true. I don't know how much all of them are because there's some those. cheesy ones. Mine was ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> but I did, there was a, a poll on, there's a YouTube poll yeah. of the, the best thousand ways to die segments okay the top 10 best ever and we were number one wow <laughs> so, is that right yeah there's the one we did was number one it was very pop well there's a good looking girl in her bra and panties which and that okay adds to yeah, you know, right. that's pretty much the draw to number one i think i don't think it had much to do with me yeah, right. but <laughs> but to be in that to, to i'm looking at that poll and we were coming out number one i'm going oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool what else have you done uh, I mean, a small parts. I've been on a lot of shows, Bones, Castle. Um, Bones, that's Did right. a run on General Hospital for a little while as a henchman. How uh, was that? What was that like, man? Uh, I can tell you what, shooting um, soap operas, I could do that all the time. They're they're very quick. The way they shoot, it's not like shooting anything else because they do so many of them. They're not. So what do they do? for time. Okay, so they call you in. They call you in and they say, go. You, and that's you, it. You may do two takes of mm-hmm. a certain scene. You, okay. you, you feed your line. You, you may do it, like I said, maybe two two times. And no uh, ADR on that stuff? Just no. Done? It's come in, you do it, it's done. We're, everything's shot on set right there. Is that pay, the soap operas pay decent? For, yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. for a day's work, better right. than you're going to make <laughs> other job. What about Bones? Bones Bones was a great experience. Um, worked one day, another one day shoot on that set. Mm-hmm. Good experience. Played a bailiff in a federal court. And got a couple lines. Okay. On got to work. One of my favorite experiences working in Hollywood was I did do a day, on the, uh, a couple of days actually on the set of Legit with Jim Jeffries, okay. comedian. Yeah. And man, had an amazing time. Jim Jeffries is a funny guy all the time, and had a great time working with him. I man. actually met out of the way I met out. I think the first time I ever met him, we did a show together for one of those networks because. Uh, Thousand Ways to Die, all those are on the mm-hmm. same network, okay. those reenactment shows. And Adam and I did a reenactment show together where um, we were Nazi soldiers. Really? And Yeah, in, in America. It was like, what if the Nazis had won type thing? And we did the show. And it was the only episode that we ever, the other show that ever got made <laughs> and aired and then never showed again. But Do you have lines in it? Again, on the reenactment shows, you'll have lines that you just kind of make up as you go along. And if some of them make them in, they may, they may not, but... It's, but it, does that, that affect you pay wise if they do the lines no, do get no, in? That's, okay. Those are that's all non union stuff, so you're making a minimal so it doesn't matter. minimal budget anyway. Wow. Okay, cool. And what about now? You got anything in the works? Uh, nothing right now. Just Yeah. Working right now, working on some writing, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh some of my own stuff. Uh, but 
nothing in the works right now. I need to get going again. I need to get back into it. Uh, you said that you had audition for John Singleton. What was that like? That I consider to be a highlight of my career just because of who he was. I mean, I got to go in one day. I had an audition for this part. I don't even know what the movie was. I don't, but I had an audition, got a call back and was told the audition would be in front of John Singleton himself. And one of the nicest guys came out, talked to us all before the audition even, you know, jived with us, made sure we were all comfortable, went in to do the audition in front of him and um, gives you good feedback. Um, I consider myself lucky that I got to audition for that guy before he passed away. It's, it was sad to hear that because after auditioning for him once, I wish I could have got the chance to work for him. Yeah, work on him, check out his whole process and everything. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, just just meeting him that day was, yeah, uh, it was a big right. honor, yeah. So Solved, that was one of those reenactment shows, right? And Yeah, when you start out in acting, there's a lot of reenactment shows out there that are a, a good way to get involved. How was that? You know what? They're a lot of fun. I got typecast a lot back in those days because of the cop thing, being a cop. Mm -hmm. So um, I would put myself out there for all these reenactment shows and they would call me to come do them. But it's it's a it's a good way to get started. It's a good way to start building your resume and it's a good way to, to get seen on TV. There's no script. It's a kind of a do it as you go type thing the way they shoot it. But is that what they tell you? Like, hey, there's no script. So No, they, they kind of tell they tell you what the action is. Yeah. This is the action, this is what we're doing. You know, and they'll they'll throw something at you like say say this say this right and then play on it, okay. and you kind of make it up as you go and you kind of do your own thing. But you've got to yeah you got to be able to ad lib a little bit. And you were on what four of those you said? Oh, I was on several of those. I was probably on Solved three or four times. I was on Call Nine One One three or four times. And is it the same like on Solved? Are you the same guy every no. time? No, you're somebody different every time. Okay, they, I don't think they care too much. Um, these are non-union shows, small shows that are on, you know, obscure networks and yeah. they but they're 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 good shows and like I said they're if you need to build a resume, they're That's a real it. good way to build a resume and to get yourself seen on TV. And 911 was another one, right? Call 911. Call 911. Yeah. yeah. Right. All dealing with um, real situations and mm -hmm. just reenacting them for the public. Yeah, sounds like a good way to to build stack a resume. I mean, if you can do multiples, right? They've uh, had a reenactment show about everything. Yeah. A lot of They're them supposed to be reality TV, supposedly, right? Yeah. yeah. What aspects would you want to get in behind the scenes as far as filmmaking and writing? And I'm look. I'd love to get into consulting more after you know 20 years of law enforcement experience. I've done a lot, and 10 years in Hollywood, I've watched a lot of what's the interaction between consultants and um, directors, and I'd I'd like to give the information I have. I'd like to be somebody who could get on scene and help them make something look real. Help them bring a bit of reality to what it's like to work in law enforcement. I wonder if there's a fine line though in between real and not. Cause like you talked about before, you gotta, you gotta make it, you know, watchable for people. But yeah. at the same time, if you keep it real, you keep the scenes looking real. Does that take away from the entertainment value? As you know far what I mean? as the reality, there's little nuances that you can make look mm -hmm. real within the scene. You're, like I said, you're never going to have a cop show that's 100% real because it's boring. Right. But there are little nuances within um, the the scenes, how how things are done, how people look when, when they hold the gun, how people look when they handcuff somebody, mm -hmm. how people look when they search a room, that um, they look better when they're done right. Sure. At least from a cop's perspective, they look better when they're done right. I love that aspect of it, and I'd like to get more involved because it looks, when it's done wrong, it looks bad. It looks bad. You know, I was watching the uh, making of Rob Zombie's Halloween, and they had some Pasadena PD come to set. And I remember the officer telling one of the guys, like, don't, one of the officer actor, never to hold a gun like this. Because hmm. he had it, he was going through the hallways, like, he was like, yeah. pointed straight down. He's, you know, I guess you can hit some shit coming up. So that was interesting. It was two officers that came. To help out with that. And, you know, to me, it made the scene that much better. You yeah. Know? If, you have, if you got your gun out, you're aiming it at something. Right. It's little little nuances like that. The whole the whole time, right? Pretty yeah, much? Yeah, pretty much. You're, okay. you're aiming until it's time to put it away. Okay. I remember when we shot Gray, I think you had, you were, when you were holding the gun, you had the finger. Yeah, there's some reality that, pe that they don't want that you have to. Right. You kind of have to give it up to the director on that. Some safety stuff concerns and stuff that we as officers do in real right. life that they don't want to see because they want you to yeah that, it's got to it's again it's got to have that excitement to it 
Yeah, I remember you and Sean were joking about that. Like that yeah. was a training thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. to keep it. Yeah, finger hit. finger outside the trigger guard is something we. When you're watching, you can kind of tell who who knows their way around firearms and who doesn't. The way they hold it and the way they handle it. Who who's a full time actor? Right. <laughs> by the way they handle a firearm. And like Heat, right? He was in Heat was a great movie. Was a great example of the little things, how how a, a gun was held, mm-hmm. um, you know, how people reacted when being shot at, or yeah, it was yeah. Heat's a movie that a lot of cops like to turn to as realistic, which is it's one of the few. Okay. Even the tactical portion, like when they're chasing down, they're you know section down they're trying to you know, track down the criminal. Yeah, he. Who, I don't. I don't know who worked on Heat, but whoever did it did a great job. Uh, giving them good tactical advice you know um the the bank robber shooting the la bank robber shooting where the guys were um you know uh all yeah. Yeah, armored down armor. from head to toe yeah. I, I've, I've never seen them i don't know if they've ever made a yeah they did with van peoples mario van peoples yeah you've got that whole thing is outlined for you on live camera from and how to news see feeds and stuff you could see it why not use that and make it that was in, part of what you refer to in ninety seven. Yeah, that was after, right? That was after Heat. Heat yeah, was ninety five. So I was wondering what they, yeah. they got a copycat idea then. Is that Maybe. Because... I went down there, man. Me yeah. and my buddy went down there and uh, checked out everything, you know. Yeah. And yeah, obviously everything looks smaller when you get there. It's intense uh, to watch on TV though. Yeah. Oh, they were dumping, man. Yeah. And we went to a Thirty One Flavors. That's right there. This kid was working, and he's like, "Check this out." And he actually brought us to the back. His freezer, this was probably maybe 10 years later. He, the freezer still had a bullet hole that came through the wall through the steel freezer. Wow. That's right? And, man, they were dumping. And I don't think anyone else got killed outside of those two guys, right? No. There yeah. was a couple officers that were struck, but I don't think nobody died. Yeah, but that that was a trip, my man. <laughs> so, anyways, um, Dan, I appreciate you coming down here and, and being a part of this. Uh, no problem, man. I appreciate you having me down here. All right, Dan Wells, everyone actor, consultant, whatever you need.